to explain what I mean by super forecasting, I need to back up. And believe it or not, I need to back up all the way to where I'm talking about, about the US intelligence community. Now, when I say the intelligence community, people say, do you mean the CIA? I say, yes, the CIA, but there are also all these other agencies. In fact, there are 16 intelligence agencies, all of which report to the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. Collectively, the US intelligence community has an annual budget in excess of $50 billion. A huge proportion of that money is spent on, on forecasting. That forecasting is extraordinarily important. It informs the decisions in the White House. How good is that forecasting? Lots of people have lots of opinions, but that's all they are. The true answer to that question is we don't know. They aren't tested for accuracy. Isn't that amazing? Decades and billions and billions of dollars not tested for accuracy. To the enormous credit of officials in the ODNI, they said, that's probably not good. We should do better, right? How do we learn how good we are and how do we get better? And those officials went to my co-author, Philip Tetlock, and they had conversations with him and with others, and they decided to fund a forecasting tournament. Now, when I say forecasting tournament, it kind of sounds like a game not a game. It's a research program, an enormous research program. What they ended up doing was going to uh, five different university-based research teams and said to these teams, you use whatever method you want to use, and we will ask you the questions that we, the intelligence analysts, have to ask all the time. Big, tough, important questions. Will Russia seize the Crimea? Will Greece default? What's going to happen to the Chinese economy in the fourth quarter? Right? Big, important, difficult questions. And then we're going to ask those questions of you, and we're going to ask hundreds of those questions, and we're going to do it over four years. And at the end of this, we'll be able to compare all the data. We'll be able to see which methods work. We'll be able to learn. We'll be able to get better. Very sensible thing. You might ask yourself, why didn't you do it decades ago? But that's another matter. Uh, but they did it. And to their enormous credit, they did it. Well, guess what happens? One of the research teams is led by, uh, as I said, my co-author, Philip Tetlock. That team was called the Good Judgment Project, and the Good Judgment Project cleaned up. One by a country mile. Uh, there were all sorts of, it's a, even the Good Judgment Project itself was an enormous research program with all sorts of variations, all sorts of interesting findings, but I'm just going to focus on one finding in particular. The finding was that there were certain individuals, a small percentage, between 1% and 2%, of all the people who were involved, who were outstanding forecasters. And how many people were involved, by the way? A lot. At any one time, there would be between 2,800 and 3,000 volunteers making forecasts for the Good Judgment Project alone. Over the course of four years, 20,000 people were involved. Okay? And out of them, they discovered these, this very small stratum of outstanding forecasters and they were consistently outstanding. I emphasize consistently. Why? Because anybody can get lucky once, but when you keep doing it over and over again, hundreds of times, over four years, you're probably looking more at skill than luck, right? So what makes super forecasters so darn good? Oh, by the way, I forgot this one. Just to give you an idea of how good they are, they blew past the performance benchmarks that were set by the ODNI at the beginning of this experiment, and all the researchers thought, these benchmarks, they're way too ambitious. They blew past them. And even more impressively, they beat the intelligence analysts themselves, the intelligence analysts who had access to classified information. These were volunteers. These were ordinary folks who, when they made their forecasts, would sit down and do what we all do, go to Google. That's all the information they had available to them. And they were beating the people who had access to the information produced by the $50 billion annual budget. Pretty impressive stuff. So why are they so good? Well, here's some general, oh, so some, some things we can say that didn't matter first. You might be thinking it's all arcane math, right? Nope, not arcane math. These people are very numerate, very comfortable with numbers. But if they're using math at all, it's basic, it's basic arithmetic. It's nothing particularly arcane. In fact, there was one super forecaster who's a Cornell math professor, brilliant young guy, and he actually, at the start of this research program, he said, you know, if I do well on this, everybody's going to say it's just because I, did, I used math. And so he made it a point of principle that he would use no math. 
no special knowledge. I want to emphasize, these are ordinary people. These are ordinary volunteers. Um, you've got a dentist, you've got a pharmacist, uh, you've got a whole lot of retirees, because retirees have time on their hands. <laughs> um, but they're ordinary people. They don't have special knowledge.